a battle between free speech and safety. We're told that this man, self-proclaimed terrorist Kamal Salim, was stopped about 10 minutes into his speech last night after police say that they found out he had a $25 million bounty on his head. 24 Hour News 8's Danny Carlson's digging into the story, and she's in studio now with cell phone video showing how this confrontation unfolded, Danny. Brian, the big issue is about that bounty. Police and school officials say it's up to event organizers to let them know if something or someone could threaten anyone's safety. But supporters of that former self-proclaimed terrorist say a lot of people knew about that bounty. It's been in the media before, and there wasn't any immediate threat to anyone at last night's speech. I was advised that this was a, a person that had, okay. that had turned his life over to Christianity and that we were going to hear about the Constitution and putting the Pledge of Allegiance back in schools. That's the information we have. Okay. Well, now we get information that there's a $25 million hit on this guy and that people are bound by the, their religion to kill him. Really? Well, you know what? It's not going to happen here. We were all kind of upset over that, obviously, because we thought it was due to Christianity or something like that, you know, that they're shut, shutting the event down. Dale Stumpnick was one of dozens who turned out to Allegan High School last night to hear Kamal Salim speak. Salim's a self-proclaimed former terrorist, and his supporters say they know he has a bounty on his head. Police say when they were told that bounty is $25 million, they shut the speech down. I simply explained to them as I'm explaining to you folks, it has absolutely nothing to do with the message or the person. Uh, it has everything to do with our ability to keep everyone safe. Allegan Police Chief Rick Hoyer says there were three other events going on at the school at the same time, and they couldn't pull the plug before the speech started because they just didn't know. I just think it's a tragedy, and I, personally, I may be wrong. I think the uh, chief of police overstepped his bounds on this one. We tried to speak with Salim today. We made several phone calls to his supporters and even went to a rendezvous point where he was initially going to meet a supporter. He didn't show up when he heard that we were there and we were told that he was not interested in doing an interview. Representative Dave Ajima, who we spoke with in that story, said in our interview today that he thinks what happened last night will eventually end up in court. Brian.